Hello, my name is Nathan Lambert and I'm going to be looping you in on some loose ends and trends in model-based reinforcement learning. Model-based reinforcement learning is a variant of the RL framework while, while an agent is improving at accident environment, trains a model predict to said environment, often with the likelihood of one-step transitions, and uses said model for control. In this talk, I will cover a few limitations, insights, and lessons from model-based RL for the learning for control and deep reinforcement learning communities. I will focus on the dynamics models. Since about 2014, the dimensionality of tasks has been growing with neural network models and relatively constant for other model types. There's a trend. Deep networks have not leveled off in task difficulty in terms of dimension, nor in rate of adoption, but these black box models come at a cost. Deep models have compounding errors and are in black box for interpretability. Model learning for control has its origins in system identification, where an explicit set of data would be gathered to collect a global model. Now, with RL, the model learns an unevenly covering of a portion of the task base. Doubly, if we draw the training loop in another way, there are some crucial missing red links between the task at hand and the dynamics model predictions. Or, from an optimization perspective, there is an assumption that two optimizations of very distinct functions will jointly optimize task reward. We coined this objective mismatch, which is present in any model learning for control framework, but most prevalent when iterative data adds collection bias. There is an assumption that log likelihood of predictions will be linked to episode reward. Is this true? In reality, it's only somewhat true. A weak correlation is not strong enough to rely on from an optimization perspective when trying to iteratively improve reward. Loose end. Models are not optimized for tasks. Accurate dynamics prediction does not imply high reward. Let's go back to one-step models and see where else this can come in. These models are used to predict trajectories by repeated compounded function evaluations, which are known to cause compounding errors. This is often used with model predictive control on moderate horizons. Model predictive control is powerful and flexible, but if the reward surface is flat within the prediction horizon, as in the case for some discrete rewards, it cannot make decisions the actions selected are random. Also, MPC incurs almost impossibly high computation cost, requiring an onboard GPU for many robots. Blue are parameter configurations with enough expressivity for low-level control, but the frequencies not, may not make it. To loose end, model predictive control be, can be wasting online computation and is not suitable for all tasks. Reducing and focusing compute is a huge opportunity in model-based RL. Let's go through a quick example that addresses some of these loose ends and points towards another trend, a more specialized variant of model-based RL. This is something that we call the trajectory-based model. It is a reconfiguration of the log state action data to predict long-term dynamics rather than individual steps. It takes in a starting state, a prediction rising, and control parameters. We hope that long-term predictions could be useful for MPC, where we're generally optimizing a receding horizon. Using our new model, we have a method called trajectory optimization, where we collect experimental data, train a trajectory model, and then use an offline optimizer, such as CMAES, to choose the next parameter for evaluation. In iterative tasks, this can be very sample efficient and leverage the local simulation properties of a dynamics model. For example, this method can solve carpool in only about two trials, fewer than Bayesian optimization. We use trajectory knowledge as a local simulator to fine-tune controllers looking at the cumulative cost rather than short horizons of an MPC. Trend. Model-based RL allows using learned models as local simulators. Model-based policy optimization and its variants have been used in many simulated and experimental tasks. It is now becoming closely tied with the growing area of offline RL. These all leverage the idea that digital computation and offline computation is cheap and expressive. In conclusion, model-based reinforcement learning has been useful for many tasks without fine optimization of many of its components. More specific models and downstream improvements to the optimizers have numerous directions for future work. Thank you for your valuable attention. If you are interested in more information or potential collaborations, please reach out to nol at berkeley.edu.